Welcome. My happy marriage. I have conflicting views on this anime because it can be very wonderful. It's beautiful art. It has some great characters at moments and an underlining underlined story that's interesting yet the more you pick at it the easier it is to see the flaws and I'm afraid in the end this anime is just going to be something that was good when watching it and the more you think back to it the easier it is to see what's wrong with it but we'll get into the information <clears throat> it's 12 episodes, 24 minutes long. It started July 5th, ended September 20th, which is like a day ago at the time of this recording. It's a summer 23 anime, average score of 80. It's by Citrus, Give me my Citrus. Uh, same people that had Rising Shoot Hero, City 1, 2, and 3, Maiden Abyss, uh, Barakamon. And a few others, but those are the big names. Star Wars Visions, Tokyo Magnitude 8.0. So it has some good... The studio's done some really good work, for sure. And you can see it in this anime. It, they put their A-team on it. The visuals are fantastic. It's a drama, romance, supernatural. But the supernatural doesn't come in to play until later on. I, I didn't read the synopsis. I went into this anime blind. I had no idea what it was about. Uh... Original story by Akumi Aji Toga, uh, directed by Takihiro Kubota. So, shout out to them. Synopsis An alternate version of the 19th century Meiji Restoration era, in which spirits and magic are real, but in decline, Mio Saimori, born without supernatural talent, is forced into existence of servitude by an abusive stepmother. So we have Cinderella vibes already right there. When Mio finally comes of marriageable age, though her hopes of being whisked away to a better life crumbles after she discovers her fiancé's identity, Kudo, a commander apparently so cold and cruel that his previous would-be brides all fled within three days of their engagements. So we have some Ice Prince, the trope right there. It's never addressed why the other women went away. It's Apparently he just didn't like them. That was a big thing in episode one that didn't get really addressed later on. With no home to return to, Mio resigns herself to her fate and soon finds her play her pale and handsome husband to be is anything but the monster she expected. As they slowly open their hearts to each other, both realize the other may be their chance at finding true love and happiness. And I guess that's pretty on the nose about what the show is at its core. And everything is just built around that. Like, the story, everything's just fully around that. So, it's on Netflix. You can catch it out right now on Netflix. It's uh, currently subbed. I'm sure it's got a dub on the way. It's been announced for Season 2, officially announced for Season 2. So, I'm sure they're going to dub the season if they haven't already. I've only watched it sub. So, Episode 1, as of course, you see her life is pretty miserable with her step with her family. Her mother's dead, by the way. Passed away when she's really young. And that's going to come into play later. Uh, and they basically give her off, give her away to uh, her husband to be. And they warm each up to each other in episode two. He thinks he, she's trying to poison him, stuff like that. Uh, they go into this, they warm up to each other. They go into the CD in the third episode. Uh, uh, the husband to be goes to meet the family and basically reveals to him like I know how you treat her now. I've redone research. You better be glad I'm even willing to give you a gift. All because the traditionally you're supposed to give the bride's family something as uh for the marriage to the daughter, but he's like. I will only give you anything if you apologize to her. And that doesn't happen. Uh, the younger sister, which is a complete and total 
terrible person. This little sister is a terrible person. She gets jealous of Mio's happy marriage and how beautiful her their hus her husband to be is. They basically uh, kidnap her. She's actually engaged to the childhood best friend that you see in episode one of Mio's. And it's a weird dynamic, weird writing. You would think that'd be her husband, but it's not. So, and it's never really addressed why they they try to make it out to be in a marriage, but it's not. Uh, they kidnap her. They hold her hostage. They hold her, and like in the shed, and they punch her. They basically. I don't know. It's weird what they think. They call off the they call off the engagement and everything like that. Well, he's not having it. The old the the boy that likes Mio from the childhood tells her husband to be, which is a commander in the military, it's, has supernatural powers. Comes and rescues her. Basically, burns down the gate and ends up fighting two other magical people that had the the thought to kidnap her. The whole uh, place gets burned down, so Mio's family's poor, and the uh, other guy's family falls on the kind of uh, could husband to be house. It's a little convoluted and like really weird when you get down to it. It's like, because it's all about the happy marriage, but at the same time, why did they think that was going to be how it ends? Why would they want to? We understand now, but retrospectively, they kidnap her because she's actually has the blood of a really powerful supernatural user family so like she, even though she doesn't have it she can still have kids that will but they treat her bad the whole life and like that's not like brand new news to them they should know that it's kind of as you watch the show you don't see that because you don't know that retrospectively makes no fucking sense makes no sense why they would do that she might not have supernatural powers at this time they do not know episode six they do not know, which is halfway through, they do not know she has supernatural powers. She doesn't know. No one really knows. The husband-to-be barely has any sense of anything happening. But she still has the blood of a very powerful family, which is her mother's side, so not her father's side. So we don't even see her family until late, later on in the show. Why wouldn't they just treat her well? She still has that. Like, that's not magical. They're still trying to get her back so they can get their magical ability into that fan, into the other family. That makes no sense right there. That absolute bullshit. It doesn't go back to say why. It doesn't do anything. Nope. Whatever. Uh, so that whole arc is wrapped up at six. I thought that was actually the most entertaining arc by far. And not knowing how everything was going to uh, play out. I thought it was fantastic. I thought, like, this is really good. I think this is going to be really, like, I would give it a 8, 9 right now, first six episodes. I thought it was good. Kind of melodramatic, though, but good. Nothing I would say is bad. Episode seven's not terrible. It They meet the husband-to-be sister, teaches her how to be a lady so they can plan for this party they're going to go to. Uh... It's very nice. And then we meet her. We start meeting people of her mother's side of the family. That we don't know yet. But we meet this one dude. We know he has relations kind of. Because her, her mother's signifies by cherry blossoms. And every time you would see this dude seeing it'd be a big one in cherry blossom. You see it right now. Cherry Blossom. Her mother is signified by Cherry Blossoms in the show. So, like, that's kind of what you should think of when you see it. Uh, a big disaster is happening. Cortices are, like, spirits that are being awakened from graves and they're attacking the city. They're basically the spirits of, like, a supernatural users that have passed on. Uh, some men come and kidnap Mio to bring her back to the her mother's family's house. So, they don't have to give out the supernatural ability to another family which that big fight happens between her husband to be and this dude which is supposed to be her other husband to be at least according to this to the, the episode that he would she would have married him instead of go to uh 
and this is where it really gets weird is that they kind of back off all that stuff they're like the family kind of just accepts what's going to happen and is like okay here's your mother's legacy here's yada yada like this is your mother's legacy this is what happens this is why she got married in that family and it doesn't explain why they didn't just go get her when her mother passed away like it doesn't make any damn sense it all could be fixed if they would have just went to the, uh, the her grandfather cut her off and was too mad and yada 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 whatever he regrets it kind of doesn't make sense of why he would treat his granddaughter badly or not go get her when the mother passed away but whatever and now they're trying to get her back because she has what is known like a in, ability to invade someone's dreams her family's really powerful because they're really specialized uh, supernatural abilities and taking down other like rogue or evil supernatural users while everyone else is specialized in taking down spirit like evil spirits and stuff like that so that's why the family's power is super valuable why wouldn't they just come get her when she's young it's not like it's it's obvious that her father did not treat did not care about her did not treat her well ever since the passing of her mother her life was not fun yet all these people are trying to get her now to make her life like hey you're very powerful apparently the one pulling the strings is the emperor which is why wouldn't the emperor just give a damn before like when her mother like apparently the emperor is very much like do not let anyone else any other supernatural users meet the spirit sight user in this or the the sleep in uh sleep maiden i forget what they call the ability sleep sight i really do not know anymore all of this just when you think back the story you realize it's not very adding up like it's just it makes sense as you're watching it the first time going back you're like that why would they do that the buying into it makes it really hard to uh to see the flaws as it happens you, there's not many flaws when it happens but when you look back it is um episode 11 she finally meets her mother in the dream in that little spiritual when she touches the cherry blossom tree she uh gets her, her apparently her mother sealed her abilities so she wouldn't have them for a long time it gets unsealed she has her abilities now whatever um eps and that same episode husband to be gets falls under a a sleep or a trance or something like that because she he got touched by touched by the go to says apparently put you to sleep or like turn you into like darkness it's it doesn't explain what to do the only thing you see is once they get touched by the spirits the person sleeps but they're not dead so now the family that's kidnapped mio and has taken her basically to live there permanently has been had backed off and like okay we'll support you we'll take you to your husband to be and you can be happy with him now and she has to and that's the end of that episode 11 episode 12 is just her rescuing him from the dream world come out of that and everything's right as rain everything's okay the emperor got his comeuppance by being defeated in the spirit world or his dream world looking back the story makes no damn sense and i don't mean that and like of course you're watching it, it makes perfect sense but then you're like wait why does now these people just give a fuck because it doesn't it tries to try to explain that stuff it's very like melancholy show of just slow pacing but very beautiful dramatic it's it's very much a drama with the supernatural vibe at some points it has a fight or two but that's not the draw of the show it is interesting to watch it though and it, it has beautiful animations so it's be it's beautiful fights and like good uh scenes it's very touching uh you feel you feel for the characters here and that's that's probably the strong point of the show is the characters you're either gonna love them or you're gonna hate them don't get me wrong both of them make their flaws and mio has made me mad about this show about 
her just because of the traumatic home environment she's not really out putting her feelings out there and the husband to be is very cold so he doesn't put his feelings out there so it's it's uh, it comes down to that problem of like if they just had a conversation an honest conversation the problems would go away but they can't because trauma story so it's kind of flawed in that way but that's also a melodramatic story so i'm not gonna hate on it too much but the, when it comes to the actual how the story unfolds and how you can go it's not rewatchable this show is very much not rewatchable because you're gonna if you the second you don't buy into the belief of how this show works you're just gonna like that makes no sense why are they just now get why is just why are they treating you so bad she still is that power she still has that bloodline it's like why are they trying to get her back why are they mean to her just for no reason like the sake mean for the sake of being mean mad because the sake of being mad story reasons it's just the main characters are fleshed out as in like the neo and the husband to be kudo but everyone else needs a little bit more to it to really get up there in a better show i hope season two brings that i hope we can kind of make this a happy marriage and the conflict between these two are going to be good and so we can have other things fleshed out and other things happen instead of like these two being internal problems i don't want the melodramatic between these two constantly let's reach out to a different store a different way you know what i mean i want it to be a happy marriage not a marriage that could fall apart every five minutes when they don't want to talk to each other that's the main character mio of course kudo kudo uh the younger sister the childhood crush I think it has really nice visuals though. Like it's the this is the springtime, of course. The winter. You don't even see this happen in the show. This is just a good visual. It's not even clear on my screen. This is very good. Fall. Summer. It's a very visually fantastic show and it deserves all the praise for that for sure. It was of course a summer twenty twenty three show. Is there anything else I want to say about it that's not direct related to story? No, I, I truly think that's about all I wanted to say. Due to all the reasons I've talked about, I do want to say, straight up, it's probably one of the best romances of the year, though. I might have a lot of flaws watching it, and retrospectively, I might like, this is not perfect. But as I watched it, I loved it. I loved almost every moment. I think episode 6, it's 12 episodes, so about episode 10, 9, 10, it had really good moments, then it had moments of like, why didn't she just, I think the melodramatic stuff, it's hard for me to really, like, be okay with some moments, so when it gets to the point, it's like, if you could just say one line right now, and everything's okay, I stop enjoying it, it's like, this is just, why is she just, why is she just this way, and that's my, that's my personal preferences, and it really bothers me, but there's very few moments that I'm like, that sucks. Why did why did it wrote that way? Why is it this way? And but while I'm watching it, you see those moments very few, few and far between. But you, I fell in love with the characters. They're fantastic. They're entertaining to watch. They truly do care about each other. They do know how to express feelings and not. It's not just a plain old tropey like characters when it comes to the main two. It's fantastic show and watching it i loved it it's probably the best top three romances of the year by far but it just can't look back and not and for that i give it a 7.5 out of 10 it could be very much a more romance and drama like lover 10 out of 10 and i could definitely agree and not argue with why it deserves that just for me, 7.5. And shout outs to the, all the people who worked on it. Let's click on the staff, give them one more shout out. Original story, director. They do a great job. I think this series did fantastic. I'm excited for season two, and I hope it fixes all the problems. A little, little less drama, 
a little more fleshed out characters, side characters, and thank you for listening to my thoughts. I appreciate you. You have a good day.